Trading Nut, episode 60, the 2019 wrap-up show. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. And looks like pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to... The 2019 wrap-up show. So this is a a little show I'm going to put together just before the new year. Uh, Give you guys a view on how my 2019 went. Hopefully there's some insights in here uh, that you can take away for your own trading. Now, uh, I'm going to go over three things that I... And the first thing is probably going to take the most. But I'm going to go over three things that I asked you in an email the other day to, around reviewing your year as a trader. And it was all around evolution, seeing yourself from going going from you know A to B. Have you improved? Where are you at? Have you just been going around in circles? Now, I've got to say that this is probably the first year I think I've significantly improved as a trader. Uh, if I look back at uh, where I was in, I think it was October, well, when I first launched Trading Art, I said, I said to you all, I said to you all, within a year, um, I'm going to put it out there in the world, I'm going to be a $1,000 a day trader. And uh, it was episode one, you can go and hear that. Somebody asked me the question in YouTube uh, in the comments and said, hey, look, did you ever make that goal? And I said, no, I didn't. I didn't, or I haven't made the goal yet. And I think in hindsight, I look back and go, that was a bad goal. That wasn't the best kind of goal I should be setting myself. And I'll tell you, it'll, it'll become obvious as you hear this this wee spiel across the course of this uh, this chat here today. Now, the, first, the three questions I wanted you guys to answer, and I'll try and answer myself today. Uh, what did you learn? Uh, number two is, what have you applied successfully? And number three is, what one thing improved your trading the most? Now, what did you learn uh, you know, there's a number of places you can learn from. I've put in here courses, mentors, groups, and resources. So today I'm going to talk to you about three courses. Now, before you get excited, I just want to let you know that unfortunately, I was sworn to secrecy on two of them. And uh, look, I'm not going to say what the courses are. I'm probably not going to tell you a lot about them. Um, but um, because of the people that have sworn me to secrecy, I'm not going to mention the courses or them or anything about them. So sorry about that, guys. Please do not contact me asking me to to tell you. I'm not going to be telling anyone, okay? So um, to start off with, the first course that I did was, well, I can tell you a little bit about it. The one thing I can tell you is it happened whilst I went to Malaysia, so I went to Malaysia. If you listen to my podcasts regularly, you'll know that there was a little trip that I took. And I did actually do a call out to you guys and said, hey, look, if you want to meet me there, you can meet me there. I'll do a meet up. Um, somebody took that up. And uh, guys, look, that was one of the courses that I took was over there. And it was look, it was a great experience. It was a great experience, though. I did meet up with an old friend. Um, so that was probably one of the highlights of the year. It was a very short trip, but massively um life-changing in its own right and uh, i've probably spent as much time on the plane as i did on the ground now that's not the last time we're going to talk about planes today we're going to talk about them once more so stay tuned for that so that was the first course which did really i suppose revolutionize my approach to price action trading it gave me a sort of foundation that i could i could use and build on And I came back and I had some good success early on. Then I sort of started heading down that road. And you guys have probably been there as well. You get excited. And it was like that scene out of of Karate Kid where Ralph Macchio, um, Daniel LaRusso is at by the beach training with Mr. Miyagi. And, you know, he's got the boxing pads on. He does a few karate punches, kicks and whatnot feels a bit excited, he gets excited about what he's doing, and then all of a sudden he starts these boxing moves, Mr. Miyagi's like, hang on a sec, falls to the ground, swoops his leg, gets him on the ground, and they're probably one of the best moves I've seen in a, in a movie, and, uh, and you know, he says, you got to stop that. 
I was like Daniel. I was literally, um, you know, bouncing around going, all right, here we go. And then it all, all the wheels fell off. And um, yeah, what can I say? The wheels fell off to the point where I just sort of, uh, I walked away from the whole whole approach completely. So it was that, you know, back to that strategy hopping scenario. And, um, but it's still stuck in the back of my mind, the fact that I, you know, I'd invested a lot of time, a lot of money in, in doing this education. And uh, yeah, look, something distracted me as well. I got an opportunity to do another course, ironically. And it was, you know, the cost for this was very low, but the cost versus the the like return in terms of time and effort that the person had put into it, and sorry, this is one of these courses I can't tell you about either, um, was was quite dramatic. Now, I, what I can tell you is it was sort of based loosely on uh, the Read the Markets slash If Me Ante, who was episode 14, and Gil, um, Gil from, uh, what episode was he? Gil was way, way back as well. He was episode um, was eight of the podcast, Gil Ben Hur. Uh, so these guys both, uh, well, If Me Ante was Read the Markets, Gil Ben Hur was an employee of Read the Markets. Now this course was sort of based on that. I've never done their 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 course. Um, it was it was based on it, and this guy was having massive success trading very small accounts and growing them fairly rapidly to to big accounts with a with a an approach of lots and lots of orders. Um, never, I mean, look, it was a lot of work. It took me a lot of time to do it was a lot of work a lot of work on his part a lot of work on my part um and by the end of it i was like look this is too much work too easy to i felt it was too easy to get wrong and it just wasn't for me so i did learn a lot though i did learn a lot there were probably about three things i took away from that um but it was and i've seen this sort of kind of style before at a high level where somebody wanted me to build a, a robot around it, and I was like, "Look, this is impossible. There's so many moving parts. There's no way you're going to build a robot that that is going to be able to um, to trade like this." So that was my second course. The third course that I did was only so last week. It was last week. It was my third course, and I was able to whip through this one in a weekend. The good news is. The guy who uh, who runs the course is going to be on the show next week, or in the next episode. Maybe not next week, but the next episode he'll be on the show. So you guys can actually learn a bit about him, and I can tell you a little bit about the course now. It was probably the best course I've done in terms of giving you a mechanical approach to trading uh, divergences. And it was, yeah, there was nothing sort of left to to question um, by the end of it, I was quite clear of the rules. I was quite clear of how to trade it. Um, what I, I did start to look at trading this approach. And then whilst I was doing that, sort of discovered the fact that I was, the, the stuff I'd learned in my first very, the, the first course I'd taken in Malaysia was, was quite relevant to this. And so I was like going, well, why don't I just keep trading that way because I now I could see it even clearer I don't know I'm not 100% sure why oh no sorry I am I am and I'll tell you that in a second um, so I, I could start seeing what I'd learned in in my Malaysia course a lot clearer now that I've done this final course I don't know why look it just I, I'd show you let me tell you why I do know why I don't know why I keep saying I don't know why I do know why it was because I was marking up the chart and then I'll look back at you know, I'd mark it up and leave leave my markups there. And then I'd sort of look back maybe a day later and go, hang on a sec, how come my markup, it, price has hit my markup and gone in the opposite direction for, you know, several, you know, dozen pips. And it was everywhere all the time. And I was like, oh, maybe that course I took in Malaysia is actually something that I should be thinking more about. And so I did start thinking more about that, and I've actually started really improving, and there's another aspect to why I've really started improving using that particular formula, or another couple of aspects. Let, let me just, um, let me talk about those later on in the show, because they are sort of quite pertinent to, to, to what helped me get, um, I suppose, get over a hurdle, 
get over a hurdle. Now, um, so that was those are the courses I took. Mentors, I, I haven't had a lot of mentoring this year. I mean, I, I'd spent a bit of time with Andre at the start of the year, but then I, like, I had a full-time job for five and a half months, so that took a lot of time to, to do, obviously, and then on top of that, doing these podcasts every week. Um, yeah, look, things sort of got out of control, and I just didn't have that time in the day. Now I have got more time in the day. I've got, I'm doing three days a week. Um, I'm now broken for Christmas, so I'm going to be off for, for a fair chunk of time here as well. Um, groups, look, I've been, that's probably something I've been more involved in this year than, than ever. Is not necessarily just my own groups, but just keeping an eye on some other groups as well and seeing what people are doing, seeing um, where they're taking entries. Telegram has been a wealth of that. Um, and it's, you know, I'm not sort of diving in fully, but. When you start to find some traders who are doing well, and even on Instagram as well, and having a look at some of the trades they're taking and trying to decipher what they're doing, that's been a, a big sort of help with um, relaying that back to how I'm approaching things as well. So a little insight, a little tip there, guys, is if you can have a look at what trades other traders are posting, whether or not it's Instagram or, or somewhere else, if you can try and decipher what they're doing, you can actually you know work out part of like the thinking around possibly why they've entered in that position especially if you just focus on price action if you start adding indicators then you're probably going to struggle so i'd recommend if they're not using indicators look at the price action and you can probably start seeing the patterns that you need to be need to be focusing on now um resources look oh, the resources i'm going to talk about are my guests on the show now I'm going to quickly, I hope it's going to be quick. Last time I sort of <laughs> did a quick run through of this and I was like, man, I don't know if this is going to be quick or not, but I'm going to try and make it quick. So from the start of 2019, we started off with Chris Laurie. Now, Chris Laurie, I did a bit of his education and I do look at the the price action and we'll talk about price action versus indicators in a second. I do look at the price action and sort of see what Chris is talking about there. I don't use it a hundred percent, but I definitely it definitely does support some of my thinking. Um, so I'm inclined. Now he was on the show back episode eighteen. The one thing that I took away from him, and I don't even think he mentions it in the episode, is the fact that a trend is confirmed when as soon as as soon as price breaks. A prior high or a low. Okay, so what is and it, look, it's not a hundred percent, and there's a whole bunch of things uh, around that. But the fact that he was able to, like, this was a, something I, I think I, I got access to a, either a free course of his or something that he given me access to. That was one thing in there that um, did hit home with me. It was like, okay, so if it, if price breaks things, then that means there's something, you know. It's a sign. It's a sign that if it's going there, it's a sign that maybe it will carry on in that direction. Um, Eli Camacho. So he was our forex trader who we were tracking across the course of the year. Now, look, I didn't get a chance to sit down with him at the end of the year. I'm looking to try and do that sometime in the new year. He had a bit of stuff going on with his life, so um, he didn't want to come on the show at that point in time. So what I'm going to do is get him back on the show early in um, 2020. Fingers crossed, everything's settled down from by then. Um, now, what hit home for me here was this guy was using $10 accounts. Now, I've heard um, I heard people say don't use $10 accounts. Um, now, look, I I don't think $10 accounts is you know you're not going to make a fortune off a $10 account initially, but I have seen people take $10 accounts to something quite significant. And when I'm talking significant, I'm talking like several thousand dollars. Yep, there's a high chance you're going to blow that account, but there's also a chance you're going to be able to take that account to like at least a hundred dollars. And if you can get it to a hundred, then you can probably get it to two hundred, as long as your psychology is in place and that sort of thing. The one, the big takeaway here for me was that I'd been going in in the past. You know, but even years and years ago, like I'm starting off with four grand in the market or five grand bang, there we go, or a thousand, like even just recently, like in the two years ago, four years ago, or maybe two years ago, a grand in the market, what I've realized is I don't know enough to be trading a grand, I don't even know enough to be trading 500, well back then I didn't, and I definitely didn't know enough to trade 5,000, what I realized is $100 is enough 
to but to, to train yourself up to get to that point where you feel that you can um, increase the risk enough to be confident in your trading. Yep, there's a psycholo- psychological sort of hurdle to overcome around the fact that you are essentially just practicing, um, and but it is real money, and that's the sooner that that real money feels like you know that four dollars or three dollars or whatever it is feels like a significant amount of money, the sooner that you are you know you've cracked it, I think, and that's sort of where I'm at at the moment is that you know the small wins actually feel like big wins, and the small losses or the losses that I have feel like big losses, or like I'm trading a bigger account than I'm actually trading. So, and there's another part to that, which I'll reveal very close to the end of the show. So anyway, anyway, long story short, the $10 account thing did get me thinking and has brought me down to trading a lot lower account size until I perfect what I'm doing. Um, Who else have we had on the show, which has been uh, sort of inspirational for the year? VP, he... If you haven't heard of him, is he's from No Nonsense Forex. He he's gone sort of viral to a certain degree. He's got a lot of followers in a short period of time, and uh, I've I've been on his show. Uh, yeah, he he replayed this episode or the episode twenty one on his actual podcast. Uh, so he's purely indicator based and gave me a completely different perspective on on how to to trade. Uh, I suppose what it really did for me was split my trading up into what I like to call the, the robotic side of it and then the discretional, discretionary manual side. So um, as you know, I've got the Robot Traders Club, I've got the Robot Builders Club, I know how to build trading software. In fact, I, I built quickly one of my guys in the Trading Nut chat room, um, who was it, Glenn, Glenn Davey, said, hey guys, anyone seen a, anyone got a robot that closes trades on an EMA? And I was like, look, it's going to take me about two minutes to build that for you. So I did build it, chucked it up there in the chat. Um, he was grateful. But the thing is, what I know is like there's so many other things you could do with that simple close on the EMA. But you really need to know how to build a trading robot to be able to do that. So it's one of these skills that I think is so useful to know how to do. As you guys know, I've got yep the Robot tr- Builders Club where I can teach you how to do that in 21 days. And the the other thing I've sort of looked at is the fact that it doesn't really matter what the you know people are like oh does it work on Ninja Trader? Does it? It doesn't really matter. It's it it's software, right, guys? It's like if you want to do a if you want to write a document, you you can use Word or you can use Google Sheets or Google Docs. It doesn't really matter. It's software. You put it on the machine, it does its thing. Um, it's the fact that it's reading price and, and doing what you need it to do and your broker will take that trade. So anyway, it doesn't matter where the software is. If it's robotic and automated and you know placing trades and exiting trades, that's all that you need it to do. Anyway, so the Robot Builders Club is what I've got to, to do that and stuff. And, and also the Robot Traders Club is where you know, I've got members who are in there. Um, we've had some really good success at the end of the year with, with one particular robot that we've built. But there's been some, uh, some of VP's robots have, uh, sorry, vo- VP's listeners have come into that group and suggested strategies that we automate that are based on these rules that VP has set out as part of his algorithm. And uh, and it's all indicator based, um, and this is a perfect thing. Uh, robotic trading is perfect for these indicator based strategies because everything is quite mechanical, and the indicators let you read them quite nicely. Whereas price action, it becomes a lot harder because price is so many dimensions that it's quite hard to automate a lot of different price action. You can automate simple stuff, but the more complex it gets, the the you know that the, it's too hard becomes too hard to decipher. Um, like little intricacies around the candlesticks when all, all is said and done. Um, but it's still doable, but very hard. So VP in his algorithmic approach to trading has really sort of, I suppose, introduced the world of indicators to me. Um, like lots of indicators out there that um, you probably are not going to find on the first page of Google. You've really got to start hunting, hunting, hunting around. I've had one sent to me to put into trading robots as part of the Robot Traders Club 
that I'd never heard of before that actually work quite well. So, um, yeah, I think we mentioned it's possibly... Oh, you'll see some videos up in the YouTube channel. Um, and I might even do a video here of one of the most one of the recent builds that I've done in the Robot Traders Club so you can see how it all works. Right, who else have we had on the show? Uh, we've had... Uh, who was it? Co- oh, Co- Le- Co-Success Lee FX was on. Now... What intrigued me about his, and I'm not too sure why, was the fact that he'd enter a buy and a sell trade to start the day off and just see, sort of see where price is going. I don't know why it intrigued me, but it was definitely something that got me thinking about the fact that, you know, you can do that, and those trades could run forever and never, 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 um, what's the word, cancel each other out so you can have two trades running forever and they'll never cancel each other out they'll just sit in a little bit of drawdown um sean lucas he was from ap apiary fund and his trading style his trading video was probably the best one i've seen all year it hasn't gone the most viral but it was probably the best um so we did a little video afterwards and the thing for me was the fact that he was looking at the ranges and dividing them by three to take a profit and i still haven't mastered this technique but I like the fact that this technique is, is there and it could be used by anyone. It's really sort of, I mean, the difficulty for me is like finding that range. And I sort of see like, you know, sometimes price will go in your direction and you go, oh, great, here we go. It's going to go and hit my target. And you know it's going to come back and retrace and at some point. And you sort of know where it's going to retrace from. And you start to see it retracing. And you're like, oh, I'm giving away all that profit. Whereas what Sean does is he takes the profit and he'll get back in again. And he takes the profit and he'll get back in again. And, and eventually it, price will go in the direction and he makes a bigger profit. So I haven't mastered that, but I do like that as a little sort of nugget of um, something that I might I don't know, potentially add in the future. We had Judy Vanekirk from Tribe of Traders on. Now, not only did she give us like essentially that the algorithm they run there at, uh, at at tribe of traders but later on we did this money mindset ninja trading challenge and it was 14 days gotta say it was pretty impactful in my life and i'll put a link up in the show notes to it i think you can still get on it though they're doing a they've got a recorded version that you can get on now so guys you check that out it's i don't know if it's going to be the full 14 day package but it was 14 days. Even after five days, I was feeling like, hang on a sec, I'm starting to get a bit more control over what's going on here with money and how that's affecting my trading and, and how I can improve things. And look, I'll tell you what the big the big thing was that I discovered, which really sort of did make a big difference, was the fact that, and it's so easy to say, but so hard to do, was to take money out of the equation. Uh, and... Now, I sort of see trading as like a game. I see it as a game. And that makes it so much better from a psychological point of view. I no longer have these monetary targets that I'm trying to get to. It's really, it's a game of trying to find the best entry and the best trade as opposed to trying to get to a monetary target, which is now a barrier, and once I get there, I give it all back. So that was the big, big change for me there, with which came out of that money mindset training from, from Judy. Now, also, if you want to talk about psychology, the Richard Friesen thing, where I actually sat down after going to my girls' football match, and he hypnotized me, uh, and I still don't want to watch it. Some people have come back saying, look, it was brilliant, um, really eye-opening so there is a video there on the youtube channel and also in the in the show notes there that you can watch the best bits um me with my eyes closed for the majority of it and uh and really sort of revealing probably way too much than even more than probably what i've revealed here on the show um so there that one there i don't know if there was a dramatic impact straight away but definitely things have changed by the end of the year uh who else have we had on here look the um Richard Jackson, I'll just talk, touch on him briefly. So, I mean, his view on the market was, look, you know, everyone's looking at everything and you need to factor in everything which could potentially, somebody could potentially be using like trend lines, Fibonacci, moving averages, all these different things that people typically use. 
and then trying to work out what to do next. Now, a little bit too intense for me. I don't think it's it didn't really resonate with me, so I sort of you know let it go by the wayside. But what it did what did hit home was the fact that you can't, I suppose, ignore. You can't ignore anything. You can't basically you can't ignore anything. You've got to really look at every single aspect of, you know, you can't sort of overlook anything. That's the, that's what I'm trying to say. Is you can't overlook anything and just go. I'm just going to going to ignore that for now. Always factor in every element. Uh, Nick Sean, interesting, interesting. This was the second time we had him on. He sort of overhauled his whole trading approach and had two money management styles, which do really factor into the, how I'm looking at things at the moment and in particular one of the robots that we're running in the in the robot traders club uh, called feed the beast now this robot has it is a beast it's a beast it's growing the test account by 100 percent and like a it was a hundred dollar account and it did it in a couple of weeks then we had the election which it didn't fare too well in but it's back up over a hundred now and uh, and that was with this mindset of yes, you will blow the account at some point. Now it, uh, I've seen the strategy week before, and and it's it's all around not giving the market too much. Um, I've seen I've had guys on the show way way back in the day um, who you know who traded an approach like this and would you know didn't want to I suppose cut trades. So cutting trades is key and cutting them before they sort of run away. So it is a little bit like trimming a bush. Um, when it grows, you want to you want to trim it back so that it's still it's still manageable. So it's a bit like that approach. But look, it, it's working, and there's guys in the in the club, and I've just sort of messaged them now to see, you know, to double check, is everyone making money on this thing? And the, the guys have come back and said, yeah, they're all up um, since we started, which has been about a month and a half ago now. Um, so... What else, what else, what else? Uh, Nick Sean, that was that. We had a couple of bonus episodes from my old 52 traders, which never really seen the light of day other than the few weeks they were up on the show. So if you didn't check those out, please go and check them out, 40 and 41. Um, then we had uh, we had Inner Circle Trader and Just Some Trader on the show. Now, these guys controversial gotta say like i had i followed uh inner circle trader on twitter for a bit now i didn't beforehand but i have now and you know it's like everyone loves him and everyone hates him it's, it's quite quite entertaining just some trader you know same thing like people love him people hate him um he's the guy with the funny voice both guys actually can pick some pretty good trades and if you have a look at what they're showing on their twitters and instagrams you'll see that um they know their stuff they know their stuff okay so very much in the mindset of that one of them's talking about manipulation is a big thing the other one i think's maybe not so much um so it got me thinking is the market really manipulated what i can tell you this much is that i've worked out is that there are people in there putting some big positions on, right? Way bigger than we could, we could imagine. And they don't want to lose those positions. So at that point, the market's just going to go with that position until they make the profit they want. And then they take it, and then they're happy to go in the other direction. Um, so they don't want to lose the money, right? Because they're talking about, you know, millions and millions. Whereas, um, so if you can jump on the back of them, you're going to be all right. If you don't, if you try and go against them, you'll eventually get squashed. So that sort of took me a long time to work out, even though I must have heard that years ago. Chris Tate, another good one. This guy, uh, the big thing that came out from me was seeing the market in a positive light, in a, in a light that, you know, this is here to give me a Porsche, was what his quote was. So fantastic little thing. Um, Mario Hennenberger, so this guy runs Enfoid, uh prop trading firm and i really did like just the fact that he was so open with what he showed on his charts and how he approached it and how it was like you know 90 95 percent mindset uh and it really did help with how i sort of saw the charts as well now i think that's it like 
you guys have heard the most recent interview, so I'm not going to go into those in too much detail, but it's been a fantastic year. Uh, was there anything else I was going to talk about here? Um, yeah, so the, the, oh yeah, so the price action versus indicators, right? So, as I said, they are very two distinct ways of trading. There is that middle ground where somebody uses an indicator and also uses price action. The way I sort of look at it is like indicator-based trading, as I've said, more robotic, um, but it's it's a bit like being in a plane. So it's a bit like being in an aeroplane, right? So you, you've got to leave. The only way you can fly is by looking at the indicators, whereas price action trading is more like being on the road and in a car. What I've got to say is that being on the road in a car gives you way more control than being in a plane um, from the perspective of you know if you want to if you want to stop and turn around you can do that pretty easily um it's uh, it just yeah you're looking at reality versus something that is other indicators that are telling you what reality is okay so price action trading is probably where i'm going to be headed most of the time um well when i say probably it's definitely where i'm headed and it's really uh, the indicator stuff is more for my automated trading, and two different, completely different styles of trading. There is that merge um, with Feed the Beast. We've got price action and indicator, so you feed this beast the direction, and then you let it go to work. Okay, that's all you need to do with that one. So there is that price action component. So you, it is good when you know how to read the the price direction. Right, now, what have I applied successfully? Well, look, you know, it did take me a long time, but the first course that I took, um, I've applied that successfully, and I sort of know now what to do in 2020. Um, What was the one thing that improved your trading the most was, really, it was dropping down the balance and just trading smaller account sizes and waiting until I could sort of see where I was going wrong, um the other thing was a bit of luck like leaving those lines on the chart and sort of seeing what price did to those lines so if if anything if you guys just want to have a go at drawing lines and just sort of seeing after a while what happens at those lines you'll know if you've got the right lines or not okay you'll know you'll know um and then it's just a case of formulating a strategy around those so guys look I'm by by no means, even though I've done all these interviews, I'm by no means an expert at trading the markets. Um, I just probably, yeah, look, I I now I now can sort of honestly say I love it and like the game of trading and really don't care that much about the monetary side of it now. Okay, I, it's more the game of trading. I love it and. Um, that's what trading that's all about is passion before profit. So to get to that passion takes a lot of work. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of work to get to that passion because, and you can see it, you can see it in the chat. You can see it when you guys come in, um, who are new to trading or or haven't been in the, in, in the game for a while. It's all about the money. So it's trying to flip it around so it doesn't become about the money at all. And look, guys it's not easy it is not easy even when you can you know you can say that to to your blue in the face but it's very hard and look i you know i'll struggle with it i'll struggle with it on a daily basis um just yesterday just yesterday (laughs) like my wife um bless her sits down and she's like i want to do another course and i'm like oh dear how much is this going to cost and um I'm not even going to tell you guys how much it was going to cost, but let's put it this way: it was, it was significant. And I, you know, even then, it's like ah, oh, the 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 fact that I had, didn't have an abundant mentality on that dollar figure was a sign that I'm not. I haven't cracked it, right? I have not cracked it. On that note, we've got work to do in 2020. Uh, I've got work. You guys have got work. And uh, look, it's a long year. Uh, I'm sure, I'm positive 2020 is going to be a lot different from my 2019. A lot better, a lot more 
Um, I feel a lot more confident about my trading, so I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, guys, I wish you guys all the best for 2020. Hope you have a great holiday season with family, friends, whatever you're planning to do. Uh, I will be taking a short break in the new year, as I mentioned, and uh, I'll be back into it in full swing come uh, mid-January. So, guys... Until then, I thought last week's was going to be the last episode, but it's not. It's, we got this one. There may even be another one before I go away. Let's see. But um, guys, yeah, look, have a great year. Thank you for listening. Thank you for those that headed to the bar. Um, and that would be, let's list them out. So these are the guys that headed over to the Trading Nut Bar to buy us a drink, sit down, have a drink with me. And those guys are, a special thanks to Mike H., Peter G, so another Peter, um, and Shane R. So thanks, guys, for the uh, buying me a beer at the bar. It does keep this podcast pumping out to your earbuds on a regular basis. So, guys, thank you very much. And until next year, see you guys on the other side of Christmas.